Throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, pharmacy teams have expanded their role on the front line, supporting the public health agenda. New research recently published shows community pharmacy could play a key clinical role in ongoing vaccination efforts, as well as future health emergencies. Dr. Ian Maidment is a reader in clinical pharmacy in the College of Health and Life Science at Aston University. He's a leading researcher, manager, and clinician, brings 25 years experience as a practicing pharmacist to the table, and is the chief investigator of the Periscope study. Thanks for sharing your expertise with us today, Dr. Maidman. Thank you. The Periscope study was led by Aston University, but also engaged researchers in other countries as the role of pharmacy varied internationally. So what was the aim of the study and explain to us the approach of realist methodology and realist synthesis. So the aim of the study was to understand how community pharmacy can contribute to the public health response to COVID, um, particularly how community pharmacy can contribute to vaccination programs. Um, so realism is a particular qualitative approach to research where you aim to understand what's really happening. Why do people behave in certain ways? So you're trying to get beneath the surface and understand we found this happening, but why do people really respond in that way? So you're really delving, trying to understand these hidden, what we call mechanisms, and from that, make recommendations of how you can change things to make things better. And you actually conducted a literature search, an extensive search from around the world. So we did uh, an extensive literature search using standard techniques for this approach. Um, and we searched across, it was online, so any documents across the world. Um, we were very inclusive. So we didn't just include academic literature. We included blogs, policy documents, um, anything really which we felt would be relevant. Um, eventually, with the extensive search, we identified, I think, over 100 documents to inform our analysis. Well, there's no question that the dependence on the community pharmacy increased during the pandemic. Pharmacies remained open. They were a go-to source amid those really overburdened healthcare systems. So once you collected all the data, once you compiled and analyzed it, what were the key findings? So I think the key finding was that really community pharmacy can have a key role in COVID vaccination uh, and the COVID response more generally but the focus needs to change. So we need to focus on clinical pharmacy as a clinical service rather than a retail service. And both policy and practice needs to focus on that. And then from that, we made kind of five detailed recommendations for policymakers of how you could start to actually focus more on the clinical aspects of pharmacy rather than the commercial aspects. Well, let's talk a little bit about those recommendations that were made. Um, most significantly, as you say, it expanded the role of pharmacy for vaccinations and with new variants like the Delta variant, the current, current model may not be sustainable, especially if annual boosters are going to be required. So what guidance did researchers have for the policymakers? So, I mean, I think you're right particularly with annual boosters, this big hub model may not work. It's probably quite expensive. Um, so it was, it was very broad brush approach to the recommendations. So we made five recommendations. Um, they included things like, um, we need to involve people on the front line in developing guidance. We need to produce guidance in a timely manner. They need to have adequate resources and funding. They need to have adequate access to IT. It was those broad brush recommendations um, for policymakers. Well, certainly one of the biggest challenges has been providing equal access to vaccines and medicines. What role can the community pharmacy play in terms of addressing issues of equity and for that matter, issues of vaccine hesitancy? So I think they have got a big role in equity and vaccine hesitancy. So often they're based in the local community, they're based on the high street, they will know their customer patient base really well. Um, and so they can really address vaccine hesitancy. Um, I think particularly often the pharmacist is from the same community as the, the local population, 
particularly ethnic minority communities. So they can, they can really reach out to these communities um, and help to address vaccine hes hesitancy as well. Also, because they're so convenient, that can also help to address hesitancy as well. So there's multi factors to hesitancy. One factor um, is um, if it's hard to get the vaccine, people are going to hesitate more. If it's easy, you can just walk into a pharmacy, you're going to not be so hesitant. Well, as much as we would like to think that we're on the home stretch, the coronavirus remains a force worldwide. So what impact will the key findings of this study have to support the expansion of pharmacy practice? Are you optimistic it will translate into expanded health roles for community pharmacy? I mean, I think that's difficult to me to totally judge. Okay, so I've, done, I've developed the policy done the research, um, making the recommendations. I'm now disseminated to as many people as possible. Um, ultimately, I can't make them introduce my, my recommendations. I can say this is what you, I, we think we should do from the research. Whether you do it or not is not totally down to me. Um, I, I think if we do focus on the clinical aspects of community pharmacy role, um, we can change things. I think this is, we probably need to do further on follow on research, or well, I'm sure we need to do further follow on research, um, more an evaluation type approach. When we've done our recommendations for our policymakers, we need to go back to policymakers and pharmacists and say, this is what we think we should be doing. How can we make it happen? So I think it's a stepwise approach, um, and this is probably the first step. Well, and I think the pandemic was a classic case study of how pharmacy can play that expanded clinical role. So the Periscope study brought together the best evidence from around the world. How important is that knowledge transfer from a global perspective, not just in terms of the current global pandemic, but in terms of future health emergencies? I mean, I think it's, it will be useful for other future global pandemics. So we focused on COVID, but we did go back and we looked at um, evidence from the SARS, evidence from other pandemics as well. So it, could, it will be useful for other pandemics. It's difficult to judge it because COVID has been such a unique thing. It's, it, it, well, and we don't know, it, you can't predict unique things. So because you can't predict new, new, unique things, it's hard to say exactly how it will be useful. But I think, the key thing is we focus on far community pharmacy as a clinical service, then we can really develop community pharmacy. And that's not just policymakers, that's practice as well. Um, so I qualified, well, I, I graduated a long time ago now. Um, and then they talked about having community pharmacy as a clinical service. And we're kind of getting there. We've got a way to go yet. Um, but this, if we focus on how they can support COVID and similar things, we can help drive community pharmacy as a clinical service, and that will have other benefits as well. I mean, we should be as community pharmacists um, advising patients on, on medication, counter-prescribing, not selling perfume. That's what we should be doing. And this can, well, this can be a, a driver behind it, partly, I think, definitely. Well, community pharmacy teams have really gone the extra mile during the COVID-19 pandemic, and it's important that we recognize these achievements and also learn from their experiences. Dr. Maidman, thank you so much for sharing your time and your expertise with Newspoint 360 today. Thank you for the interview.